In the latest of the Regatum Institute's History of Capitalism lectures, we're delighted to welcome Andrew Roberts, something of a man of the hour after the recent publication of his brilliant biography of Napoleon. But here, Andrew is coming to talk to us this evening about Winston Churchill and the relationship between Winston Churchill's life and times and the cause of free trade, something integral to the evolution of the Churchillian career, according to Andrew. He started off believing in his father's version of young England, uh, which was a liberal Tory concept. Uh, he believed in free trade. In fact, that was the reason that he left the Tory party. But um, he then actually was one of the founders of the welfare state. Churchill believed, and I think in this he's right, that he didn't move, that the parties moved around him. The 1906 general election was lost by the Conservatives and the Liberal Unionists because they uh, wanted to go down the protectionist route, which would lead to uh, more expensive food for, for the working man. And of course, uh, Churchill was a Liberal by that stage. So he had the um, chance of getting into the Cabinet, as well as the chance of being right, in his view, and so he, uh, he didn't find it difficult to ditch the Tory party, but he, when he came back to the Tory party, they had themselves embraced free trade. So it was, um, it was a sort of homecoming for him. Protectionism, I think, is a pejorative term for imperial preference, really. I mean, it was, you were preferring other nations of your own uh, kith and kin because, of course, the countries that they wanted to prefer were New Zealand, Australia, Canada, um, the, uh, the other English-speaking peoples. Britons felt at that time that the only way that they would be able to stand up to that is if the empire, the British Empire, became a single political unit. And the way to do that was to make sure that it was an economic unit. So imperial preference being a way of not just keeping the imperial show on the road, but of guaranteeing ever further uh, deepening of the economic unity. Of the I empire. think that phrase, we've, we've heard it before, and we are hearing it quite a lot at the moment, of course, with the Prime Minister's attempted renegotiation of the European uh, deal that uh, Britain has. But for somebody who believed in the British Empire as a, um, as a progressive force for good in the world in about 1900, which, by the way, Winston Churchill did as well, um, but uh, for Joseph Chamberlain, it became, when he became colonial secretary in 1895, uh, the driving force of his, uh, of his, of his life. He thought that uh, the way in which um, Britain could recreate a kind of Roman Empire that would bring peace and prosperity for, for hundreds of years. Um, today this sounds like an absurd chimera, but if you go back to that late 19th century period, it was a genuine concept and something that a lot of people did believe in. And it's a striking fact that when one considers the Churchillian career in its entire magnificence, it's the strength of the opposition to socialism that is really profoundly felt right up until throughout that career, isn't it? He really did feel, all the way through his life, and especially, of course, in the 1945 general election in which he, um, he denounced all forms of socialism, that it was a foreign import, uh, one that uh, had no part of the warp and woof of the British people, and that it was, um, it was also didn't work. That was another point. The sheer you know, efficacy of, uh, of collectivism, as, in, as far as he saw it, was non-existent. So his, um, his struggle against socialism was one, of the, uh, was one of the guiding lights of his entire political career, from his first speech um, when he was a very young man all the way through to, uh, to the end. 